our film sector, and Roger is going to have a word to say uh, after I'm finished this morning about the importance that that represents, the opportunity that it represents. I was proud this week to be able to stand up and say that we did two billion dollars worth of business, film and television and digital production in the city of Toronto last year, a record. But I also know that if we look to future opportunity, it doesn't just rest in Los Angeles. It rests in Bollywood, where we have in place the co-production agreements and so on. They have the talent, they have the industry, and we have the talent, and we have the industry here to be great partners and to have more of that work done uh, right here in the city of Toronto. And he'll explain what we're going to do there, what the opportunity is, and what we're going to do there, because we're going to be visiting uh, with some of the most prominent people and having a prominent place uh, for Toronto uh, in front of one of their biggest uh, conferences that they have each year. So welcome and thank you very much for coming. Thank you, Veritori, uh, for the introduction. Uh, thank you, Render, for hosting us. Um, a little, I, I wanted to actually start with a little bit of background in um, Indian film production. We've been doing this since 1995 with um, Bollywood and the Tamil film industry, which is equally big. And I speak to you today as film production activity coming to Toronto is surpassing $2 billion, as the mayor mentioned. And I speak to you when the fastest growing sector in India is entertainment and media. India is an explosive economy, but the fastest growing sector there today is entertainment and media. Film production, distribution and exhibition companies have now become public entities during the past decade or so and are integrated horizontally and vertically. India produces over 1,500 to 2,000 feature films a year, more than twice as many as Hollywood. India's film market is currently worth more than $2 billion. And on that note, India is way too under screen for its potential, with one screen per 100,000 people. But it is changing rapidly. When the real potential is realized, you're looking at $8 billion, in my conservative opinion, or 10, if you believe, Forbes articles. And these are US dollars, by the way. The way our dollar is going, that's maybe 40 billion in the next five years or so. That was a joke. <laughs> um, so Indians are devoted film goers. I'm sure if you know Bollywood, you would know that. Uh, it's been said that cinema is the lifeblood of Indian people. I can attest to that. With the help of a population of 1.7 million South Asians in Canada alone, Indian films in Canada and the United States have broken new ground and established a place for Indian cinema in major multiplex centers, as well as Indian films constantly are in the top grocers of the week they open, surpassing any independent or Canadian film grosses by far. Switzerland, Italy, Australia, New Zealand, UK, Malaysia, Philippines, Germany, and Hollywood have become suitors of Indian production houses, and vice versa is also true, in an attempt to negotiate partnerships and to take advantage of the new financial expansiveness. The American Association of Producers is a signed member of the Indian Producers Association, and vice versa. Sony, Viacom, Disney, Netflix are in India producing and looking to expand into war films and TV content. Numerous film festivals, including Cannes and our TIFF, have selected India as their targeted countries over and over again. Guru, Slumdog Millionaire, Jungle Book, Lion, and numerous Indian-centric films have had successes in award functions proves that the world is receptive to India and Indian-oriented films. I just wanted to give you a little bit of background on, on this, so that is what was my attempt at that. Film co-production treaties, which we have with India, in general, are signed between the governments of two countries. But the success of such treaties largely depends on the initiatives taken by the individual producers and industry professionals of those countries. Just because a treaty is signed doesn't mean we're automatically going to see co-productions happening. A lot of factors drive those initiatives and political will 
is right near the top. An elected leader of Toronto, where all the film action is at, going to the doorstep of a well-established film industry and saying, I'm here to validate and confirm that we're genuinely interested for you to shoot with us in Toronto, in my opinion, sells it. I'm glad we have a mayor that gets the film industry and he gets that a personal touch is very important in our industry and is even more important for co-ventures and co-productions because the partners need those constant assurances and validations that everything will be fine from all aspects in the short-term marriage that they're going to enter into with each other and in a city that at least one or sometimes both haven't been to or worked in. A personal visit to India by the mayor is a positive step to encourage collaborative approach between the two creative entities. It validates to India and the Indian film industry professionals that Toronto wants their business and is willing to their doorstep to ask for it. As we shatter new ceilings with film production activities coming to Toronto, surpassing $2 billion, it is befitting that the leader of the biggest city in Canada goes to India, the country that produces the most films on the planet, to keep the momentum going and to create even more jobs in the city. If we're going to open new doors into the Indian film industry, this trade mission, in my opinion, is a must. And this visit, being the first Toronto mayoral visit to India, will not only send the right message, but drive the fact home. Thank you, Mayor, and thank you, everyone.